What did you find? Hidden gems. What is going on, YouTube? Man, how yep, awesome yep. is that to see your little five-year-old daughter doing a little skit for you there to open up your show? Man, that's wonderful. Man, there's nothing that's... better than getting your kids included. Exactly. I mean, this is why we do it. It's for fun. Exactly. You know what I mean? Get them included in it. You never know. They may be future fantasy stars. Hey, and then when we get old, they want to take care of us. Absolutely. So, you know. Somebody's got to take care of us when we're older. Yep. Hope you're all doing good out there today. I got a lot of things to talk about. Um, man. I can't believe it. it's getting close. Man. It's getting real close. I'm getting excited, dog. Now, I see some things on Twitter every once in a while, which, hey, as far as Twitter goes, thanks for all the support to everybody. Yeah. Getting lots of love on Twitter. Indeed. Uh, definitely, definitely seeing all these pictures popping up of how many days till the season starts. And, man, I'm starting to, <laughs> starting to get a little bit giddy. Starting to feel like Christmas. Uh, no. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It is a little it's... bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. We've got a few things we want to talk about. Uh, you guys saw in the opening, uh, Hidden Gems. Yes. These are guys that you can get later on that can be, you know, rock solid figures for your team that mm -hmm. you can get at a, a dirt cheap price. Yep. I mean, these are guys you can get 8th, ninth, 10th round and on and, and be successful and ride them throughout the year. Yes, indeed. Uh, first one we want to talk about, I want to get your opinion on it over there, Mac. Jack Doyle. Jack Ma Doyle. Doyle. <laughs> I like Jack. You know what? One of the biggest things, you know, he's in a prolific offense. Uh, Andrew Luck, great quarterback. He's almost at the point where they've pretty much, I don't want to say forgotten about Peyton, mm -hmm. but it's like, eh, uh, Peyton was, you know, he was cool. <laughs> but it's, right. Yeah, he's yeah. all right. You know, but it's all about luck now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no Dwayne Allen there. Mm. So Jack Doyle is a huge red zone target, you know, uh, and to be honest, in my honest opinion, everybody talks about Moncrief, you know, being that second receiver, somebody that's going to uh, play off of T.Y., you know, get some of those targets. But if you look at it, you know, he had 600 yards last year and five TDs. Moncrief had around about 307. So, I mean, when your tight end is getting more targets and, and looks, you know, that's huge. And I think, um, you know, luck really – Depends on him, especially when they get down to the red zone. So, I really like Jack. I like him a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely somebody that can give you tight end one potential mm -hmm. and get him way after the Kelseys, the Gronks, the – Yeah. Even the Delaney Walkers, who I do like Delaney Walker. I mean, I know he's got a lot of weapons to, to compete with. But, oh, yeah. But Jack Doyle is somebody you can plug and play. Yeah. Get him for dirt cheap. Yeah. If you combine the stats of Jack Doyle and – uh, Dwayne Allen last year. Uh -huh. I mean, you're talking top ten tight end, easy. Exactly. Easy. Exactly. So I'll take Jack Doyle all day long. Yeah. Uh, what about what about Danny Woodhead? This is somebody who's I would like to give a lot of love to. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people are loving on Danny Woodhead though. Well, you know, Danny, he's he's intriguing to me. Um, you know, he he's getting a little. You know, long in the tooth, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He came off the injury last year. Um, but everything, you know, all the reports and everything he's saying that he's looking great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's a third down back. You know, anytime Flacco's probably going to get in trouble, a little dump pass off, to, you know, to Danny Woodhead. I, th I think that's where he will fit best in that type of offense. Um, West is going to be your first, second down uh, type uh you know, running back. Danny Wood is intriguing. I, it's, it's really hard for me to kind of gauge him, you know, exactly how, you know, Flacco's going to use him. But he's very intriguing, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely, and especially in PPR leagues. Yeah. If you got a PPR league and this is somebody you can get later on, mm -hmm. I mean, that is all day long money in the bank, baby. Ching, ching, baby. Money in the bank. Indeed. I mean, Indeed. this is this is a guy that's capable of going out and getting 80 receptions. Yeah. I mean, if you can get that, put it in your flex play, and still get your solid RBs. Yeah, man. And he has a a, a porn mustache. Man, I mean, come on. I mean, have you seen it lately? <laughs> the dude, the thing is majestic. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever called another dude's mustache ma majestic before. Yeah, but I can't even spell majestic. That's man, a big word. It is. That's a big word. But hey, you know, I mean, it's it's 
it's going to be interesting to see. I yeah, mean, the whole yeah. running back situation in Baltimore, I mean, I think if any one of those guys were alone, mm-hmm. there's somebody you need to pay a lot of attention to. Being that there's three of them, something you're going to have to watch in training camp. Yeah. Find out who, you know, kind of solidifies themselves. I know Dixon's going to be out a few games, but when Dixon comes back, I mean, you got three of them there to deal with. Well, see, and, that, and that's another thing, you know, and that's a good point. What are what are the chances that Dixon, you know, he's he's going to be out what three games? Mm-hmm. Okay, if Woodhead is he's balling out, Wes is doing his thing, you know that the, the combination of two they might they might push Dixon mm-hmm. out to the side. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's one of those situations if you can get Woodhead in the later rounds, you know, you got that hidden gem, you know, somebody that you know can give you, um, you know, that much needed. You know, punch mm-hmm. uh, down the stretch. Uh, so I, I, I would really look at him. You know, he's uh, very, very intriguing. Yep, absolutely. And somebody else, you know, that I mean, I know this was your boy at the beginning of the last season. Yeah, you kind of, you kind of hit a hidden gem on this one last year. Yeah, talk to me. Yeah, uh, and then, and you did the right thing. Yeah, uh-huh. you dumped him as quick as humanly possible. Yes, the first person who. Saw those shiny stats. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to name no names because he may be watching this video. He, right. know, he know who he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you dumped Marvin Jones. Yeah, yeah. Marvin yeah. Jones last year started off, I think, as the overall number one wide receiver the first few weeks of the season. Right. Uh, that didn't last. Well, see, that's one of the things, you know, that we advise, you know, all you listeners as well, you know, tune in, you know, to this channel because we're – you know, we got to ears to the ground when it comes to training camps, everything like that. And that's one of the things that I noticed last year. You know, all the hype, all the beat writers, everybody was talking up Marvin Jones, talking about how great, you know, the rapport was between him and uh, Stafford. And it showed, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the first few games, man, he was just outstanding. Uh, not quite sure what happened. Uh, a lot of talks was that he had some nagging, you know, like soft tissue injuries that, you know, uh, plagued him and then. Here comes uh, Golden Tate, mm-hmm. you know. So it's just one of those things, you know, and that, it goes with a lot of a lot of players. It happens, mm-hmm. you know. But in the same token, um, you know, he he was a fairly decent player yeah, starting out. And, and I think the Lions' inability to run the ball last year played a little bit into that. Yeah, they didn't yeah. have a running back back there. Theo Riddick had a great overall year catching mm-hmm. passes, but they didn't have that solid running game. Yeah, to allow the defense to not stack the box up or to you know not protect all those those receivers on the outside, and I think that's what hurt Marvin Jones. Yeah, they, uh, teams knew they weren't going to run the ball. Yeah, uh, yeah so that's... they just dropped people back in coverage. Marvin started off so hot, team team started keying in on him. Yeah, and the next thing you know, Marvin Jones is you know non-existent for yeah. a few weeks. But this year, it's somebody you got to pay attention to. Oh, you, yeah. you can't just forget about him. The guy has the potential and the capability to do it. Oh, yeah. It's not somebody that on week one, I want to throw Marvin Jones into my lineup as my wide receiver one or two. No. But if I got him sitting on the bench, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Golden Tate either. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's nothing out there that I'm, you know, too high on Golden Tate about. But if I can get Marvin Jones late, yeah. And as long as Golden Tate stays healthy and it's not just the Marvin Jones show and he can kind of hang out between the slot and the outside, Mm -hmm. he can get you by in a bye week. He can get you, you know, a few points here and there. And plus, I mean, his name's Golden. I mean, that's like my name would be Silver Galloway. Silver Galloway. What in the what in the no, no <laughs> I, I can't I can't do nothing about that. Exactly. No. All right. Well, uh, what else, Mac? What else you got? You got anything, any other hidden gems there in the late rounds? Um, but one person that I I've been I've been thinking about, mm-hmm. and and I don't know. I want I want to believe in him. I do. I really want to. Mm. But he's a rookie. Uh-oh. There's lots of talk about him. Uh-huh. And it's Marlon Mack. Okay. Okay. It's somebody I that I that I I'm really intrigued with. Yeah. He could have the perfect opportunity. Now, obviously Gore's going to start the season. Mm-hmm. But he, this is a guy that's already getting a lot of media attention. He's already, you know, looking like he's able to carry the load. Yeah. And Frank Gore I mean, Frank Gore may be 206 years old this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw a picture the other day with him and Moses. Um, he was <laughs> carrying the other, you know, tablet. Yeah. You know, the Ten Commandments. So, I, yeah, I, I agree. Really, you know, it's an injury away. Yeah. I mean, like, how – first of all, who's going to draft Frank Gore? You know, you if you get him, you're going to get him 
12th round mm-hmm. at best. If you, you know, pick Frank Gore uh, around 6th, 7th round, I might slap you. Yeah, you're going to, you know what I'm saying? You're probably not going to win very many leagues. No, because you, you're really setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. You know, he's. Unless, he's been, mm-hmm. unless you can get Mac late. Right, 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 right. Because Gore is going to start the year, the starter. And I think they are going to have a lot more successful running game in Indy this year. Yeah, but it, if, you, if you've if noticed, it's been like a steady decline. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He had decent numbers last year. I don't even know if he, if I'm not mistaken, I had to double check my stats, but I think he didn't even top 1,000 yards. Mm-hmm. Um, and Andrew Luck, you know, he, he wants to throw that ball. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, T.Y. Hilton. Gosh, he probably had 200 targets last year. I mean, that's not going to slow up. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But, again, I agree with you on that. Marlon Mack is somebody you need to look at because Frank Gore, like I said, he can walk out of the darn mm-hmm. locker room and trip over his shoe. Yep, and be done. Yeah, exactly. Well, and here's one thing. You just mentioned T.Y. Hilton, and obviously he's no surprise to anybody. I mean, he's going mm-hmm. average second round. Yeah. I know you like T.Y. Hilton. Mm-hmm. And we were talking off camera earlier about a name and – and you mentioned that you, you weren't too high on him this year, but mm-hmm. he's got potential. Yeah. Dante Moncrief. You don't like yeah. Dante Moncrief. Oh, Dante. No. I mean, no. he's he not sexy. No, no, no. I mean, you ain't going to be happy if you end up with Moncrief <laughs> having to start. Yeah. But here's why I like Moncrief. T.Y. Hilton's going to be there. Right. He'll be the number two. Mm-hmm. A little bit... Uh, a little bit of attention going towards T.Y. He's in a contract year. I love. Yeah. I yeah. love drafting guys in yes, contract indeed. years. Uh, contract years are playing for the franchise tag. Mm-hmm. Any one of those two things, I'm gonna be targeting those guys because they're playing for oh, for that man. payday. Yeah. They're looking for that. Uh, they're looking for that ching. You know what I mean? <laughs> All day long, they want that money. Yeah. And uh, they will. They will ball out yeah. in order to get that big payday. Uh, for that reason alone, mm-hmm. Moncrief may be somewhat of a little hidden gem. Not not quite late rounds, but he's there in the mid rounds. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, if you look at him around, like I said, 11, 12, mm-hmm. somewhere in there, he's a good wide receiver three. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, low end wide receiver three. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, you know, it, it's 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 a couple of rookies out there. I would probably like to uh, aforementioned uh, Kenny Galladay. A couple of shows ago that I was talking about, I'd almost, you know, would rather take a chance on somebody like that who's got more of a high uh, upside. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, uh, you know, Moncrief is just not one of my favorite players. No? Yeah, no, nah, not really. I mean, this year, I mean, the past few years, yeah, I, I'll give it to you. I wasn't, I wasn't too high on mm-hmm. Moncrief. And I'm not overly high on him this year. Yeah. Uh, it's just something where... I'm willing to take that chance mm-hmm. and hope that he can cash in, you know, on that on that payday. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. It has yeah. nothing to do with. I'm not a big fan of him or or whatever. I just, I just, I just want. I want to target those guys in contract. Oh yeah. You know yeah. that. And that's that's about it. Self destruct sequence oh, activated. Uh oh. <laughs> what was that? Warning. Mm. Warning. Oh, you know what that is, Mac. <laughs> you know what? I think. <laughs> I think somebody purposely put that that noise into there. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I was I was doing just a little twittering and uh, you tweeting Mac tweeting a little tweeting you know, t- Twitter tweeting tweeting yeah. <laughs> um, and I was looking at some things, man. And a very interesting topic came across, you know, and, and it was very intriguing to me because this is um, kind of it kind of goes into play with somebody that um, a lot of people are gonna be looking at to draft really high. In, in their leagues this year, and that's old Thomas Brady. You did not just go there. Thomas Brady. Man. That's so, that's going to be somebody's early round pick. Exactly. This is going to be a guy. Okay, first of all, the dude, how lucky can you get? I mean, he's Pretty got lucky. a hot, sexy wife. I mean. He's got a bajillion in $12. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um he lives in a house the size of the county that we live in. Exactly. Yeah. He was in Ted too. All right. Yeah. Okay. You know, anyway, that's a, little, that's a little much. <laughs> right. So, but here's the thing. Uh, you know, they were talking about the Madden curse. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm one. I don't really believe in a lot of stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But numbers don't lie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I like to look at facts. And the fact remains. 
it's been so many different people that has fell under this so-called curse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and as everybody knows, you know, he's gracing the cover of Madden this year. Mm. So you play Madden? I used to. I used to be a huge Madden yeah, fan. Yeah, he used to be a Madden. I was baller. pretty good. Yeah, back too, in the though. day. Yeah, back in the day. <laughs> back in the day, we still... talking about Madden when Madden was on the cover. Exactly. No, not too many real people even know that Madden used to be on the Madden, cover. Exactly, and you know that's a great. Madden point. never got hurt. He never got hurt. Well, but see, here's the thing. That's how it all started. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's where the conspiracy lies. Um, I think it was like in '99 when Madden stopped being on the cover. You know what I'm saying? Then they started allowing mm-hmm. um, NFL players, players mm-hmm. to do it. And once they did that, that's when the injuries started to come. You know, I mean. The injuries <laughs> piled up, too. Yeah, it's yeah. A, I think it's like 16 out of 19 years of this video game Crazy. since players have been on the cover. Yeah. Have gotten injured. That's ridiculous. That, that's that's mind-blowing. I think it happened every single year yeah. from 99 to 2012. At um, some point throughout that year, that player – Got some type of injury, whether it's a regular season or playoffs, they got something, hurt. Something, something. I mean, you know, and just a few, you know, people, uh, some of the, the greats that I, I like to mention, like in 2004, Michael Vick broke his leg in preseason. Boom. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was on the cover 2004. 2005, Ray Lewis is on the cover. Torn hamstring. Mm-hmm. Get him out of here. Mm-hmm. 2006, Donovan McNabb. Mm. That's a name we hadn't heard in a long Man, time. Man, I like McNabb. McNabb. He used to be a fantasy good. stud. He was pretty good. Uh, he ended up with a sports hernia. Those are not fun. Have you had one? Uh, kind of, sort of. No, I don't want to know. We don't want to know. No, no, no details. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. I'll pass. <laughs> so, and he was out for the season. 2007, Sean Alexander, uh, running back for Seahawks. He was out with a broken foot. Boom, done. His season was over. Vince Young, 2008. I'm pretty sure Vince Young's flipping burgers somewhere right now. Vince Young is at uh, Walmart. <laughs> yeah, you, did, you, did you catch I him? I saw him. I was like, dude. Dude. You're Vince Young. He was like, man, don't tell nobody. Anyway, I gave him a dollar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he had a knee injury. Boom. His season was done. 2009, Brent Favre. For favor? Yes. Torn bicep. Boom, he was out there. He was probably about 112 at that, you know, stage. Well, he was looking to get hurt because he was busy trying to hook up with girls on the side anyway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, 2010. This one hurt me really bad because mm-hmm. my boy Troy Palomalo. This was the first cover where it was Troy and your boy Fitz, Larry Fitzgerald. I like they Fitz. Sh- yeah, Fitz is, yeah, Fitz is pretty Fitz, pretty. Fitz is still nice. Fitz is getting old too now, Jake. <laughs> He way He's, old. Yeah. But I'd still take him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would. Matter <laughs> of fact, I would take him uh, before Moncrief, but I think he'd probably go before yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, heck, I remember last year in our draft, I think Fitz went one of the last rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, man, I remember who picked him, but they, they got a real winner there. I think I actually tried trading for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think I was one of the ones to try to get him. That was the year that the Super Bowl was rigged, right? Oh, wait, hold, okay, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on. We, we won't talk about that. Exactly. But yeah, so you know they they shared the um, the cover, and Troy had a um, sprained MCL that year. Boom, he was done. Larry he finished the season, but he had a postseason rib injury. So, you know that's Still. not coincidence. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then let's jump to, to uh, 2014. My main man AD Adrian Peterson. All day. All day. <laughs> I almost messed up. We ain't right. got no beat button. I got a beat button. Oh, okay. I got a beat. I don't know where the beat button's at, but yeah. I can... There you go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we, we'll... well, next time. Yeah. You got to give me a winger. I might slip now. You got to give me a winger. I got to have time to press the button on it. You know what Sometimes I mean? Sometimes I get excited. I might slip. I can maybe have to hit it a couple times. You might. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Especially if we, yeah, we get to talking about the Cowboys, you might have to really hit that yeah, button. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, but, you know, he was suspended that year, and that was due to you know, legal matters and stuff of that nature. Uh, you know, so he the remainder of the season he was gone. Then, you know, let's jump to 2016. Mm. Gronk. Gronk. You know. And just, you know what? I think Gronk, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, he – I mean, I know he went out early. Mm-hmm. But the thing with, with Gronk is I don't think it matters with Gronk. I think he's mm-hmm. just going to get hurt every year. Yeah. So I don't know if his was a coincidence – 
with the Madden curse, right. or it was just it's a growing thing. He's just gonna get hurt, uh, and that's that's possible. I mean, you know what I'm he saying? He gets hurt all the time. But the thing, okay, yeah, well, you know, I don't want to get in there because you know, but Gronk, you know, the dude missed so many games. I think it was like eight games last mm-hmm. year. You know what I'm saying? Um, Super Bowl, he didn't even play. He had back issues, mm-hmm. but then all of a sudden, you saw him on WWE. You know, knocking cats over, putting them in suplexes mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah, they're the looking like Goldberg. You know what I'm saying? Old school Goldberg. Exactly. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah, he, he got no sense at all. I but, mean, but he's a good tight end. He's a he's a great tight end, mm-hmm. man. I mean, but he's somebody I don't know if I would take this year, mm-hmm. especially not at at the ADP that you're gonna have to pay for him. Nope. So I, I'd pass on him. Um, but yeah. So and then. You know, here we go, 2017, boom, Thomas Brady is on that cover. Mm. A so, lot of people probably were happy to see him on that cover. Me being one of them. Uh-oh. So, you got to be careful. You're going to get trouble and get in trouble at home. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that is true. But Well, you know, know what's crazy about it, too, is, I mean, I know the players don't believe in the Madden curse. I think Tom Brady even put out a mm-hmm. little commercial type thing mocking the Madden curse. Yeah. At his age, I wouldn't be mocking nothing. No. I mean, he is to the point now, one blindside hit, and yeah, he may not get up. Yeah, yeah. he's going to fall and not get up indeed. I mean, you know, he's getting he's getting a little up in age as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, like I said, I, I'm, I'm one that I don't tend to, you know, look at that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. Wrap his foot around, all that good stuff. But... I mean, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like you said, the number was what, like 16 out of 19? Yep. And that, if you take them out to Vegas, man. Yeah. I'll take them all day long. You know what I mean? Vegas. You might do all right. Absolutely. 16 out of 19. Yeah. Take so that all day long. If I'm sitting, well, if I'm sitting at, I don't know, six round, obviously he's not going to be there. Well, you probably are going to be sitting at the six round. I don't think you draft standing up. Well, it depends on where you draft at. You know, I don't want to know. I've, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but you know, it, it I'd, I'd look at him. You know what I'm saying? But I'd almost would rather have somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, not necessarily the fact that this curse, but uh, hey, it comes into play. Yeah, I mean, it's something everybody's got to pay attention to. I mean, and I'm not going to say don't draft Tom Brady because he's on the cover of Madden. Yeah. But if he gets hurt. I told you we, so. We told you so. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, hey. Yeah. I mean, that's it's something you got to pay attention to. Yeah. It's something you definitely got to pay attention to. I mean, I hope – I mean, I don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't wish right. injury uh, – there's a few people I kind of wish injury Yeah, on, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not my favorite player, but he's fun to watch. I mean, oh, he, yeah. he, he's one of the greatest players of our generation, and mm-hmm. uh, people for a very long time will be talking about Tom Brady. Um, yeah. I mean, he's – I don't want to call him the GOAT. I can't, no. I can't I can't do that. No, no. I can't we, do that. Yeah. I I I'd, I'd have to hit a a sensor button, sensor on, button on that cuz I mm-mm. No, there, there's no, too many other players out there. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's get here into the uh, the next category, the next few players we want to talk about. I hate you all so much. And those are the people we cannot stand. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way, it doesn't matter what happens. Mhm. Uh this could be the last, you know, three or four names on the board. Yeah. I'm just going to have three or four roster spots cuz I can't click the draft button. I might get a kicker. I might get these. two kickers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I got to take one of these guys. <laughs> and these are going to be some names that probably going to surprise a lot of people. Yep. We may get some flack for these. Yep. You got some broad shoulders because I have a feeling we're about to get yeah. rammed for a few of these. It ain't going to feel good here in a couple of minutes, but we're going we're gonna to spit them out because it's what we believe. This is what we do. That's right. And if we're right at mm-hmm. the end of the season, we can look you know dead in the camera and see, I told you. Yes. The first people we want to talk about. Kind of even nervous to say it. Go ahead, man. And, and this, yeah. let me let me preface this by saying this only is as of right now. Right, 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 right. The preseason could change this. Yeah, yeah. it's just because it's unknown. Mm-hmm. Mark That's Ingram true. and the aforementioned Adrian Peterson. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? <clears throat> it, it's it, it was almost blasphemy to even you know say this. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing: it is what it is. You know. It's it it's been uh, widely known. They don't like Mark Ingram. No, you know what I mean. No. They do not like this guy. He's a he's a great back. Yeah, you know he's got talent. If he was in any other situation, he'd be an RB one mm-hmm. all day long. You put Mark Ingram behind 
Dallas, uh, their offensive line, Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Oakland. Yeah, Oakland, uh, KC, he would excel. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, man. I mean, him and Sean Payton, I don't know if he stole Sean Payton's lunch. Or, I don't know. but I mean, he looks old. Yeah, Have yeah. you seen him? Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe Sean Payton's just a little bit afraid of him. I mean, he, yeah. he walk around, he got a scowl on his face all the time. It, well, yeah. But I guess if, if I wasn't getting all my touches, I'd probably be pretty angry, I'd too. I'd be mad, too. Yeah, definitely. I'd be mad and then jumping my Bentley after the game. That's but, right. You know. But, you know, get over it. Exactly. But here's the thing, and I guess what I say where preseason matters is mm-hmm. if one of these guys gets hurt or one of them becomes the true lead back, mm-hmm. then – yeah, I no longer hate them. Right, right, right. But I guess, and to play devil's advocate, just a tad bit. But, and see, also the thing is with Kamar Aiken. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, not Kamar Aiken. I'm sorry. I'm like, I don't think Kamar Aiken has anything to do with this. But, yeah, 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 yeah. But if we I don't want to talk, why was I thinking of Kamar Aiken? Is I he talking know. about me? Yeah, maybe. What's the kid that he drafted? The um, Alvin, Alvin, Alvin Kamara. Kamara. You were close. Did, hey, dyslexic moment. Right. <laughs> but you know they drafted him. So and then brought in AD, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So it's like the backfield is like loaded. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just a mixture of different type of backs, and really all three are kind of different. Mm-hmm. You know, Adrian's going to run, you know, between the tackles. Mm-hmm. Marker Ingram's kind of the same. He can catch a few passes. I mean, I don't know, man. It's just it's a mess. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know if I want any parts of that. You know, if Adrian Peterson was the AD of Three years ago, mm-hmm. wouldn't be a question. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you know, with um, Breeze having all those weapons around him, you know he's going to throw for five thousand yards. Mm-hmm. Um, defenses can't really cheat, you know, to the line. So, <laughs> you know, Adrian Peterson could have a a heck of a year mm-hmm. if he's, you know, the if eight. he's the lead guy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if they're each getting eight carries a game, I'll, yeah. I'll pass. Exactly. So no. no. What about? Uh, what about Tyreek Hill? Mm, hit the sensor button. Hang on a second. I, gotta, I don't even know where the sensor button's at. But yeah. Hold yourself. Hold yeah. yourself. Because I... It, that... <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think about him. Yeah. Um, nothing personal about him. So, Tyreek, if you're watching this video, hey, man, it's all good. That's right. But when it comes to... Send us a jersey. We'll hang it up. E- exactly. Sign it. <laughs> you know what, man? I don't see him as being... The wide receiver one, everybody is expecting him mm-hmm. to be. Uh, to be all honest, I really like Chris Conley in his offense. Uh, you know, you know, a lot of people aren't talking about him. A lot of people don't even know who he is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But the guy, he's a very intelligent wide receiver. Uh, Jerry Macklin, you know, took him under his wing. Really, uh, you know, really nurtured this guy, you know, um, so to me, I think he's going to be a steal. Tyreek is so he's he's a gimmicky player. Mm-hmm. You know that's what I see when I watch him. Yeah, he's had flashes. He showed a lot of potential. Um, I just don't see him as being a wide receiver one. I mean, he's like five eight, five nine, about a buck eighty five. Uh, he's fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, the dude is quick. Yeah, but to be a wide receiver one, how many did you? How many do you know that's that frame, that stature, um, you know, you're not going to be able to come off the line and, mm-hmm. and really uh, <laughs> a bump and run or something, like some type of aggressive defense. He's not going to be able to get free. No. The only reason he did it last year, you know, when Macklin was semi-healthy, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. Kelsey, you know, he had a lot of people to take um, the pressure defensively off of him. So, you know, he was able to escape and, you know, have some big plays. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to depend on him to be a wide receiver one, you might be in a little trouble. Yeah, you uh, you may not make the playoffs on that one. Exactly. And, you know, another thing I heard, too, is he's it's possible he's not even going to be returning kicks this year. Yeah. So I mean, if that's the case, I mean, some of these leagues that reward for the, the six points for the touchdown, mm-hmm. I mean, they benefited a lot from that last year because he had a few returns. But if he's yeah. not even getting that, that's just even more points you're not getting credit for. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'll pass. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll pass. I'm, I'm not uh, – I don't have anything to do with that kid. Yeah, no. I mean, best of luck to him. Yeah, like, yeah. He ain't going to be on my fantasy team. No, not mine no, either. No, not at all. No. Well, hey, you know what? That was a, a lot of information. I'm sure right now our cell phones are blowing up because Twitter people are probably 
angry at the last four names we talked about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure we're probably gonna get some hate mail. But it's you know what? Good. You have broad shoulders to do this. It's all good. It's all, it's all good. That's There's nothing it. wrong with fantasy football. I love fantasy Man, football. I love fantasy football too. Hey, wanna thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh make sure you like the video, you like, comment, subscribe, send us your questions. Uh, you know, send us uh emails, tweets. It's hard to say tweets. Tweeters. Tweeters, little tweeters. Yeah. Uh, do whatever you gotta do. Get us get us in touch with us. We'll we'll reach back out to you guys. We'll answer your questions. Help you deal with any dilemmas you may have. Yeah. And make sure everybody has a nice, successful fantasy football season right around the corner. Uh, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. We appreciate you all. You all have a good rest of your day. Peace. Peace.